guys, Mr. Klein here with our final lesson of our chapter. We're going to be talking about types of matter today, so let's go ahead and get started. I know you are totally intrigued by this slice of cheese right here. I have a question for you about this cheese. What does this cheese and this diesel have in common? Well, the more clever of you might say, well, they're both, you know, based on carbon. Yeah, but more simply for what we're talking about in this chapter is they're all types of matter and that's what we're going to be talking about today so go ahead and get your graphic organizer started with this right here types of matter this is where we're starting uh, off with so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna talk about the different types of matter in this lesson first off we have elements now whether you're looking at cheese or an advanced petrochemical like diesel you are looking at a substance or a particular kind of matter with specific properties most substances are some sort of combination of other substances but if you have a pure substance, in other words, it's only one type of substance, you know, it's just it, that's exactly what it is, you know, like oxygen or something like that, you can't break it down into anything else unless you're breaking it down into subatomic particles. What do you have is you have what we call an element, okay? In the universe, as of right now, 2015, including man-made elements that we've made in the laboratory, we only have about 120 elements that we know of, and each of them have unique properties. So let's go ahead and let's add this to our graphic organizer. First type of matter we're going to talk about are elements. Elements are pure substances that cannot be broken down into anything else. In other words, like if we do manage to break them down, they stop becoming atoms, okay, which are single bits of matter. Okay, so... Some elements, like hydrogen, are extremely abundant. They're all over the universe. Others, like plutonium, can only be made in special laboratories. In fact, they're man-made. Plutonium is highly radioactive. Here's a picture of it right here. And we use it in nuclear power plants and also in nuclear weapons. So let's go ahead and let's add an example to our graphic organizer. An example of elements would be hydrogen. Hydrogen is in water. Hydrogen is in the sun. Okay, and other things like that. So you might want to draw an example next to hydrogen right there. You know, water, sun, something like that. Okay, so our first type of matter we're talking about is elements. The next type are molecules. When you have two or more atoms that are joined together chemically, you have a molecule. That's all a molecule is. One or more, two or more atoms bonded together chemically. It doesn't matter whether the atoms are the same type of atoms or not. If there's atoms that are bonded together, you have a molecule. Now, if the molecule consists of the same type of atom, it will have the same properties of the individual atoms. In other words, if you have one carbon atom floating around by itself, it's going to have the same chemical and physical properties as two uh, carbon atoms bonded together or four carbon atoms bonded together, so on and so forth, because it's all carbon. It's all the same element. Okay, So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about molecules. There are more than one atoms bonded together chemically. Like I said, I have that right there. Okay, make sure you have that written down in your study guide. And also, so once you have that, let's go ahead and let's add to our uh, graphic organizer. We're going to add molecules right here. So we have elements and we have molecules. Okay, molecules, like I said, are more than one atom bonded together chemically. Now, there's a particular type of molecule, if you will, but we're going to consider it separate because it's a bit different than molecules, if you will, just by that simple definition. And it's compounds. My question for you is this. What do you think happens when you bond together more than one type of atom together? Well, what you get is a completely different substance from the atoms that it is made up of. What you get is what we call a compound. A compound is a unique substance that forms when two or more elements combine chemically. So instead of two carbon atoms, you might have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Those combine to form water. Now, compounds have completely different properties than the atoms that make it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to put compounds off to the side because it's a different type of matter. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a dotted line and connect molecules and compounds together. Okay, so go ahead and put that down right there. So we have compounds separate, but we're putting dotted lines between the molecule and compounds so that we know that they're related. Like I just said, Compounds have completely different properties than the atoms that they make it up. For example, sodium and chlorine are both elements that are extremely dangerous. But when you put them together, you make salt, which without salt, living humans can't survive. You know, actually, sodium is a dull metal like this that you can actually cut with a knife. Chlorine's an extremely poisonous gas, 
uh, that if you inhale it, you can die from. But if you put it together, you make salt, which, you know, gives food flavor and our body needs in order to regulate. And a good chunk of our blood includes that also. So let's go ahead and let's add an example to our graphic organizer. When we're talking about compounds, we're talking about salt. Okay, salt, water, um, diesel, things like that. Okay, all of those plastics and, and, and bronze and steel and all of those things are all compounds, okay? And we'll talk about this more later this year, compounds and how they react and stuff like that. So that's, that's what happens when we bond together atoms and stuff chemically. But what happens if we're not bonding them chemically? We're just throwing them together physically. Well, that's what we have right here. We just mix them together. And when you just mix together substances physically, what you end up with is a mixture, okay? When you have a mixture that you can tell the individual substances apart, it is called a heterogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous means different. So a tossed salad or Italian salad dressing are examples of heterogeneous mixtures. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's add mixtures to our graphic organizer. We're going to give their, we're going to talk about two different types of mixtures. So we're going to add heterogeneous mixtures. That's the first type. And let's give some examples of heterogeneous mixtures, like I just said. First type we have right here is a tossed salad. As you can see, you can see the peppers, the tomatoes, the, the croutons, the onions, the carrots, the bell peppers, you know, the dressing, all of this stuff. They're all separate and they're all sitting there. We can pick them out individually. It makes it a heterogeneous mixture. Italian salad dressing is also an example right here. As you can see, you can see the herbs, the spices, the oil, all of that stuff's all nice and separate, and we can see them individually. That's what makes it a heterogeneous mixture. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a scribbly line, and we're going to add tossed salad as an example for heterogeneous mixtures. As you can see, our graphic organizer is taking shape. So mixtures, we have heterogeneous mixtures. This is where you can see the individual bits and a tossed salad. So if heterogeneous mixtures are ones where you can see the bits and you can easily take it apart, what happens when mixtures are so well mixed that you can't see them, you can't separate them easily? Well, that's what we call a solution. Solutions form when one substance dissolves into another. Okay, there's two parts to a solution. The f oh, then let's go ahead and let's add this right here. Solutions is the second part of a mixture. Okay, like we said, a solution is what happens when you have two substances mixed together physically, but they're mixed so well you can't pull them apart or they're evenly spread out. So like I said, what happens when you have two parts of the solution? Well, the first, you have the solute. The solute is a substance that is dissolved. Okay, that's the part that falls apart and you can't see the bits. And the solvent is the substance that the solute dissolves itself in. Okay, so here's an example. The solutes are the little bits that have fallen apart or have been dissolved in the liquid, which is usually the solvent. What you usually have is you have a solid dropped into a solvent and it falls apart and it ends up being spread out evenly in a solution. Okay. So solutions, we can go into great detail, but all we're doing right here for our lesson is just kind of giving an overview. Solvents or uh, solutions rather are uniform in their composition. In other words, the substances are evenly spread out. Like I just said, seawater is an example of a solution. Salt and other substances are dissolved in the water so evenly it's not easy to remove them. Okay. So seawater right here, if we scoop out a scoop of seawater, we have a little bit of salt, we have some other substances, but if we pull out another scoop somewhere else, the salt and those other substances will be spread out nice and uniformly. So, you know, for the most part, we can't find like big chunks of salt floating around in the water. So let's go ahead and let's add salt water to our example. So here you go. That's our lesson on types of matter. We have a bunch of different types. We have elements, which are pure substances. An example would be hydrogen or plutonium. We have molecules. Molecules are two or more atoms bonded together chemically. Okay, if we have different elements bonded together chemically, we form a compound. And they usually have different, they have different properties in the individual elements that make up. For example, salt is made up of sodium, which is a highly reactive metal that can set fire and you can cut it with a knife. Then you have chlorine, which is a dangerous gas. You mix them together, you make salt, something we can't live without. If we're mixing them, to, uh, if we're mixing the elements together physically, in other words, we're not bonding them, we have what are called mixtures. There's two types of mixtures, heterogeneous mixtures, 
they are mixed together in a way where you can only you can just pull out the individual components. A tossed salad would be an example of that. And then we have ones where it's mixed together nice and evenly. We call those solutions. Salt water is an example of that. So there you go. That's the lesson. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, understand something. And if, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching. <laughs>